All right, so tomorrow the U.S. Supreme Court will take up a case that could affect hundreds of people charged in connection with the Capitol riot. That includes former President Donald Trump. Yeah, we're joined by digital investigative reporter Jordan Fisher, who has been covering these cases for three years now. And Jordan, I guess the first thing we should find out is what's at stake here? All right, Leslie, so we're, we're talking about a charge that's used in more than 300 different January 6th cases. And we're talking about cases that you've heard about, the Oath Keepers conspiracy mm -hmm. case, the Proud Boys conspiracy case, some of the most violent assaults on police officers, and in the election fraud case against former President Donald Trump. And of those 300 cases, more than 150 have already been sentenced. So, you know, this isn't a, an abstract thing. We're talking about p people who are currently in prison now who could see their cases affected by this ruling. All right, so can you summarize for us the arguments that both sides will be making tomorrow? So this chart, the charge we're talking about, which is called obstruction of official proceeding, mm -hmm. it, it comes from a statute that was passed after the Enron scandal, you recall the big energy giant, and Congress came in and they saw that the Enron's auditor was able to escape through this loophole even though they destroyed potentially incriminating documents, and, mm -hmm. and Congress wanted to fill that. That's where the defendants, the January 6th defendants, want the Supreme Court to focus and say that this is a statute that's about destroying or altering evidence or records. Now, the, the government and every other judge uh, almost every other judge who has looked at this question has read it much more broadly. They say that Congress intended this to be a catch-all so that anyone who came in and tried to obstruct Congress in any way in the future could be prosecuted. Okay. So if the Supreme Court ultimately decides with these defendants, what does it mean for them? What does it mean for the former president? Well, like I said, anyone who's in prison right now is going to immediately ask that a charge be dismissed. They're going to ask for a resentencing. They're going to potentially ask to be let out while that appeal and resentencing happens. Uh, people who are awaiting trial right now are going to have to, um, you know, very likely get back. The, it, charges could be dismissed from indictments. I mean, it could have a cascading mm. wave of effects. Now, you know, for some people who have other felonies, it may not affect their potential sentencing too much, particularly some of those big seditious conspiracy cases mm -hmm. we talked about. Now, as to former President Trump, special counsel Jack Smith has said he's confident that his case will hold up because, if you recall, I said this was an, about evidence, mm -hmm. he says those, those false slates of electors that he alleges President Trump and his allies commissioned, mm -hmm. that counts. That's mm -hmm. what this, even the most narrowest reading, the narrowest reading of this statute would cover that. So he says he's confident his case would handle. So hold oh, on. We're just talking here. It could take a minute before we find out what the Supreme Court decides, right? Yeah, so when, when are we expecting that? They take it up tomorrow, the opinion comes? Right. We'd be looking at sometime in June, okay. um, as well as the decision uh, that, for, that the, for the Supreme Court will be hearing arguments later this week about Trump's immunity claims. Both right. of those decisions we're expecting in June. Okay. Well, they a lot got for a the lot, courts. A lot yeah. to do. Yeah. Okay, Jordan. More Thank than you. usual. Thank All right. You.